The reading for this Reformation Sunday from the 8th chapter of John's Gospel. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lord God, we thank you this day for your church, for the one who is the head of your church, Jesus the Christ, and among the many saints for his servant, Martin Luther. Thank you for his heart, for his welcoming of the gift of life through the cross, and for the hope of life that never ends. Be with us now as we reflect upon your word through the words of Luther and the whole cloud of witnesses who have followed, that indeed our witness to you today and our commitment may be one that we realize is of your doing. In the name of Jesus, amen. I want to say at the outset, beyond what Pastor Deb said, that um, the doors there uh, are for us certainly a visible symbol and reminder of what we've read about, uh, that of the history that's been told us, I want to say thank you to, uh, to Stephanie's husband, Marty, for uh, crafting up those old doors which yours truly found at the Bacchus Trading Post along Highway 371 <laughs> in Bacchus. They came from a hotel in St. Paul. Um, and then also to Stephanie for her artistic creativity. Uh, as you see at the top, um, Luther's seal. Uh, certainly the heart in red, the color of blood, certainly one of the symbols of the church, the Lutheran uh, focus, and that it is uh, through uh, the darkness and the blackness of death on the cross that Christ indeed has saved us from uh, eternal uh, separation. But that the dark black of the cross does not change the redness and the brightness and the life of the color of the red, the heart, in fact, it is indeed for we who are called to believe in this Christ, that the faith in that one who died for us to save us from eternal separation, that indeed our heart remains alive and fresh and red and life-giving. And then it's set all in the, the white rose, the symbol of peace, and not the peace that the world gives, as Paul tells us, but the peace that Christ himself gives us. Uh, which is different from the peace many times that the world is seeking through different means than believing in Jesus the Christ. And then set in against the backdrop of blue, uh, the sky, the reminders of uh, this peace leading us in the direction of whatever that heavenly place and existence might be, that it is a place where we hope and seek and wish to be forever with God. And the gold ring uh, reminding us that um, uh, in that place, in that heavenly abode, is where uh, we will forever, a big word, eternity, forever be in the company of our Creator, our Redeemer, and the one who keeps us in the faith, Jesus the Christ, and today by the power of God's Holy Spirit. So it is Reformation Sunday, 2015. German monk Martin Luther and his friends enlightened the Christian church and indeed the whole world. They committed themselves to change in the church, for Luther saw some things that he didn't believe uh, followed from his reading of Holy Scripture. They did it because it mattered to them that the church reflected the truth of Holy Scripture. They did it because faith called for nothing less. They did it because what Scripture said to them was that in Christ, each life mattered to God. They were free to choose to live lives faithful to Christ, no matter what. And each life mattered to God. It was a matter of commitment to the person God and Christ had freed them to be. 
So the Reformation was about the freedom to be faithful in a world where even as is ours today, one that can seem very bound up and uh, imprisoning on many accounts. But that freedom in Christ is yours and mine today, thus we are here to celebrate. You matter, I matter. Thank God. The late Lutheran pastor and theologian Joseph Sittler wrote these words, at seminaries and in schools preparatory to the seminary discipline, I have often been asked by identity conscious students whether the work appropriate to the ministry will be congruent with their search for identity. My reply, Sittler writes, is that the contemporary split between identity and commitment is probably a false one. When Gerard Manley Hopkins said, what I do is me, his statement was earthy and true. Luther would have loved it. For identity is a kind of possibility and promise. It will most often open to the substance and shape of a commitment about which we are thinking today. Ordination to the ministry fixes one's identity where one's commitments are. Today, we are again asked to define the shape of our commitment to the call of Christ. Home base for the location of ministry is like home base on the baseball field. The players do not decide where home base is. The decision is given in the nature of the game. Whether I knew what home base was when I was preparing for the ministry is doubtful, Sittler reflects. But upon my ordination, I was told. I was ordained to the ministry of the Word of God and of the sacraments. So in a sense, my home base is the church's determination. And the church got that determination from the constitution of the church by the one who was both base and home. If that kind of initial objectivity really were to determine our understanding of our ministry, a good deal of the present perturbation about a minister's self-image and the image of a minister by the population at large could be prevented if one is given a home base and understands that his or her vocation is to play the game from there. One's self-image is a result of how well and how devoutly this is accomplished. He concludes, I meet so many young people who say they want to train for the ordained ministry because they want to help people. Helping people is important, but a minister is not ordained to help people in general. He or she is there with an understanding that the ultimate help for people is to put them into relationship with God. Now, if a minister extends that help, this will engender other forms of aid which will follow upon it and be expressions of it. If one has faith, one will have charity and also an understanding of what kind of help people need to which ordination is direct access." Unquote. If one has faith. Martin Luther was big on faith, wasn't he? On core values, on one's deepest roots to support a life in the persistent encounters with the winds of change wherever the Spirit of God carried that person. The cherished gift of identity in one's life, given as a gift in baptism, Luther fought for the truth that set one free, free to live, free to serve, free to love, free to hope. Faith is, he would agree with Paul, the sum and substance of things that one hopes for, no matter the odds. He staked his very life on these convictions, and he sealed his fate when on October 31, 1517, he said, here I am, here I stand. I can do no other than confess this. So on this Reformation Sunday, dear friends, the echo of Martin Luther's life-giving commitment rings loud and clear these five centuries later. We are still confessing our sins to God because we still have sins to confess. We can't carry the burden of sin alone, can we? And live. Luther's bold declaration is not out of date, not obsolete or old fashioned. These memory filled walls of Trinity Lutheran Church, this house of prayer, have not filtered out the clarion call to service and mission. Many of you know that very well. 
Baptisms here and beyond these walls remain the ordination commitment that we have all made through parents, sponsors, each other, a commitment being claimed and renewed today as we offer to God our financial commitment for the support of the continuing work of ministry in this new and challenging world. On the playing field that is the world, this community of faith is home base for you and for me here and now. You are here now for a reason. The Church of Jesus Christ has been, is yet, and will always be home base, the faith station that fixes your identity where your commitments are. And a portion of that commitment, as you know, is what you give to support the church financially. This Lutheran community of faith, imperfect, sinful, and spiritually growing as it is, despite that, is the field where God has called us to engage faith with the realities of daily life. And so we thank God for the abiding presence and promise that is ours to receive, a presence we are reminded of again today as we come to the Lord's table. And this requires humility, love, and grace to receive this gift of God's presence every day. Today on our Commitment Sunday here at Trinity, albeit five centuries beyond Martin Luther, we have come to worship our great and glorious God. We celebrate our identity in Christ and our freedom that our baptism in his name has provided us to choose in favor of the upbuilding of the kingdom of God in this broken world. We who have been given the gift of home base celebrate our baptismal covenant to he who was and is for us both home and base. We didn't choose God, God chose us, you and me. You matter to God, I matter to God. We at Trinity Lutheran Church matter to God. And we matter because of Jesus Christ and his cross. What an honor to be carriers of that gift of love. The song went, when yet the dawn has filled the skies, behold, my Christ comes. He chases us from sin and night and brings us joy and life and light, hallelujah. So sang the church of the Reformation in five centuries past. And so shall we sing in this 21st century our expressions of change and transition and God's glorious transformation of our hearts, our minds, and our spiritual lives. Christ is the son of righteousness, as you see on the back wall, risen upon this expected congregation for which every day is Easter. And they that love him shall be as the son when he goes forth in his might. We too, then, embrace the new day by the power of God's love. By God's grace, we embrace Trinity's season of renewal. This too is God's time with us and for us. Let our new reformation be the living witness of God's love and grace on the open doors that are our hearts. And in our commitments made today and blessed here today, we can be certain that God is here with us at home base. God's decision in your baptism and mine for your life, for God's mission, for the church of Jesus Christ. For there is a church which has a mission, and there is a mission which has a church, and we are privileged to be a part. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, so it is now, and will always be, even unto the close of this age. Amen. <laughs>